He is clearly India's biggest match winner at the moment. 39 test matches, 220 wickets. Yes, it's, it's a real stat. I'm not making that up. Seven Man of the Series awards. No Indian has ever done that. You're on a roll. Ravi Chandra Ashwin, welcome. Many congratulations. Thank you so much. But you are actually on a roll. Looks like it. Uh, <laughs> when I look back at my journey, it's been, uh, it's been one hell of a dream. Uh, I never, I, at one stage, I just wanted to play one test for India. Uh, people touted me saying I was just a T20 bowler, a limited bowler, a limited overs bowler. All these taglines were flying around, but I didn't want to. I did want to make a difference. Uh, ever since I got my first man of the match in my first test, uh, till now I can't. I can't even remember how the time has gone. It's just flown past, and I'm very happy where I stand today. So, is it hard work? Is it talent? It's a harnessing of both. I think it's uh, repetitively trying to uh, get over people criticizing you for whatever you've not achieved. And uh, also a little bit of uh, own benchmarking that I've started to manage over a period of time. Uh, whenever, whenever I've gone out there, like every batsman wants to get a hundred, my aim is to get a five-wicket haul. So whenever I, it's in my vicinity, I've gone on to get it, and uh, that's 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 like an addiction for me now. And I try to get it. If it's not, if, if I don't achieve it, it's a bit of a disappointment. So I would say, in all in all, it's a bit of a benchmarking that I've tried to manage. Real strong words. <laughs> He's an interviewer's dream, you know. I mean, for my viewers. Every time I've interviewed Ashwin, he's one who will speak his mind, he will not hold back, which makes our job so much easier. And when you watch it, you will have a lot. And in this interview, we're going to celebrate him, we're going to get him to show his grips, what he does with this ball, mesmerizes the opposition. And we will also have some Diwali sweets. Maybe Virat will watch that and say, what is Borea <laughs> doing to my premier bowler? That's also coming on this show. But talking on Virat, what an innings, what a player. I mean, it's mind-boggling the kind of uh, kind of chases he puts India down to. It's just amazing. I mean, uh, we were, I was watching the game last night with a couple of my friends as well, and uh, the way he just paces these chases. It, I, I mean, uh, when Ross Taylor put his put his catch down, and he crossed 50, it was it was all but curtains. I mean, he was it was well under his reach. Uh, he would never let the run rate creep up over 6.5. He was keeping it within his reach. The kind of boundaries and the way he runs between the wickets and the I mean. There are, there are certain, certain grounds in India where he's absolutely mastered the angles and he knows where he can get, to, get his twos, when he can accelerate. For example, that game against Australia in the T20 World Cup. I mean, somebody who chases that game down and he, he literally hunted it down all alone. Uh, and to play the same ground and having the scoring rate under his control, it was just a matter of time. But uh, I, think, I think he is one of those guys who's going to drive Indian cricket really forward and up and uh, to heights we have, we have never seen so far. One more question on him before I come back to you. You are, I mean, sort of very close to him, close friends. I've asked him this question about you and he has great praise for you. But can you decode Virat? I mean, each time we, we are running out of adject adjectives now. In, uh, I mean, there's not one adjective that I can put him down to. But uh, if, if, if at all I could just pin it down into one, one word, it's actually not one word, it's role model. In the sense that uh, uh, he, he uh, I, I kind of started playing cricket with him. He was this uh, very, very excited uh, young kid who burst onto the scene, uh, very aggressive. He just put his emotions, he just wore his emotions in his heart and continued playing cricket. He was, uh, he was one of those cricketers people could easily pull down and say he's very aggressive, he's very arrogant and all that. But that is the next generation, isn't it? And he's just transformed the way cricket needs to be viewed in this country. He's, he's extremely fit. He leads by example. Only if you do something, you can actually pull up your players and actually demand it out of your players. A anything, any, every walk of the game, he tries and leads by example. Sometimes I get, I get worried and scared that he might injure himself trying to be that extra, trying to give that extra. Uh, I went up to him and asked him if he doesn't want to rest, and he's like, "No, I want to get a couple of hundreds." So, yeah, when you go into a five-match series and look at a batsman saying, "I want to get a couple of hundreds," that's like. That's like mind-boggling, but that's the standard he's managed to set for uh, cricketers coming, uh, batsmen coming from our country now. And uh, what is also interesting is he can sort of sustain that intensity day in day out. His, his fitness allows him to do it. He's one of those batsmen who's done performance training in a fashion which is enhancing his game. He's definitely had skill, no doubt he's had the skill, he's had the potential, he's had the thing of hunting down scores, he's chased, he's, a, he's one of the finest chasers India has seen. Uh, but that's to the best ever? Best, best ever the world has seen probably. Uh, once upon a time, we used to call Michael Bevan as one of the chasing dreams. But I mean, times have changed. It is a different era. People are hunting down different kinds of scores. You don't know where he's going to go one day. One day we might be ch chasing 400s on a regular basis. And uh, if you put it, put it down to that, his performance training is 
is attention to detail for smaller things. How we can convert those ones to twos. How we can sustain after the 41st over. How often do you see actually cricketers batting at number three or opening the batting, thinking about 40 and beyond overs? And he does that actually. And if you see yesterday, he took the game till 47 and just club Brent Bolt. Just like I mean, just finish the game in an over. He knows exactly what he needs to do. But Ravi Chandra Ashwin is one man. Virat Kohli, when you ask him, and he will say, "My biggest match winner, throw the ball, win him the match." <laughs> What's happening? I mean, what have you done? I mean, it, because I know, having followed you closely off season, you work immensely hard. Is it sort of num the variations that are that are working, or I mean, come on, with so much technology, why are people not able to figure you out? See, I wouldn't say not being able to figure figure me out is one of the reasons. I would say uh, my my adaptability is one of the biggest strengths I have uh, to make decisions on the field, try and convince my captain to change fields, try and make him give that extra couple of overs, and also to a greater extent try and analyze batsmen about what their game plan is. These are these are my strengths on the field. I can try and make adjustments towards that. But uh, one of my biggest changes or one of the biggest uh, acceptances that I've had over the last four years or say maybe two three years let's let's shorten it down a little bit is the fact that uh, my communication and honesty has been a little bit better communicated to people in the sense uh, when when I was left out in the Adelaide test at, uh, uh, last year in 2015 it was it was like one of the biggest setbacks in my life uh, the captain was Virat Kohli very uh, very strangely enough but the fact that he left me out and there was a reason behind him playing Karan Sharma it was very clear that I needed to push myself up, and uh, it it was I, I never never took it on my uh, took it on myself as a personal decision. The fact that I was just not good enough to be played, so I had to really push myself and scale newer heights. I saw what Virat was doing day in and day out. Come what may, if he got a hundred, if he got a zero, if he got a ten, he used to be at the gym, he used to give extreme amount of intensity at practice. So I just imbibed that into my into my system. And told myself, if Virat can do that in, as a batsman, why can't I do it as a bowler and try and be an all-rounder of sorts for the team? And I just pushed myself to the extreme limits and worked really hard, tried and worked on ticking boxes of my fitness. I, yes, I'm not one of those natural athletes. I, I wasn't born that way. But uh, I, I'm definitely one of the most hard-working cricketers going on. Look at the T20. I mean, it did not end in the best way. So much of flack, so much of criticism. But then West Indies and New Zealand, I mean, it's just as if you've, you've just come back and... Made the cherry your own and doing. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've never seen it as a comeback. To be very honest, uh, those are those are not decisions in my hand entirely. Uh, uh, how I'm used or where I'm used or how we win a game or not, I definitely want to win all the games that I bowl for my country. But it, it's not that it's not that it's going to happen every day. But the fact that I'm bowling really well and I'm trusting my skill cannot be changed. I will not force you to answer this question, but because it's you, I'm asking this. If a T20-like thing happens, does it dent a bowler's confidence that, okay, maybe my captain doesn't have enough faith, I am the match winner, was I given the, the, a raw deal? See, what, what, I've, what I've understood is the fact that uh, sometimes, sometimes decision-making is, uh, is, is based on what's, what's offered to a captain or what's offered to a leader. He has to make decisions based on what are the conditions, what are the batsmen, and... Uh, Quite often, what what I fail to understand is the fact that uh, I'm just I'm just operating merely on my merely on my want to win games for India, want to bowl those four overs, want to pick pick up those wickets, and when that doesn't happen, I'm just disappointed. That's it. This is your this is your domain. Please, can you show my viewers? It's all yours. This segment. Before I go into a break in the next three minutes, it's all Ravi Ashwin. Tell me what what do you do with this ball? What are the variations? And if, if I can get my camera person to zoom in, this is a Ravi Ashwin masterclass in three minutes for my viewers. Yeah, show so, me. I mean, uh, so this, I, this I slightly see this on live TV, <laughs> but to see this is a different act. So this is a slightly newer ball. It's got more lacquer on it, so it's just slipping out of my now, middle finger a little bit more. <laughs> somebody tweeted, you can you can swing it with a the cabbage these days. Ashwat Dinda <laughs> tweeted. Ashwat Dinda saw it. <laughs> yeah, I saw it on Twitter. Yeah, so. So basically, this uh, new ball uh, gives a, gives a lot more uh, got lot more potency as far as I'm concerned because being a finger spinner and I, I have a couple of grips for my off spin. Uh, this is one of those. I try and uh, hold it really deep. My index finger locks in deep, and my middle finger also locks and wraps around the ball. So when I grip it this way and wrap my thumb around, I get a lot more hold on the ball. This helps me give it a lot of top spin, and especially with the new ball, with my top spin it starts to bounce a little bit more, which I quite enjoy. And when I do this, 
the seam position going towards the batsman is like this. It's not exactly 90 or a 45, it's somewhere in between and this enables me to, this enables the seam to fall much more on the surface and gives me more bounce. And uh, when it starts, if this doesn't, this is also based on the pitch. Sometimes the pitch doesn't have enough bounce. This ball can actually sit and be helpful for the batsman to go, back, go on the back foot and punch me through. So uh, some wickets enable spin exactly at 45 degrees, for which I try and release my uh, middle finger this way. I don't hold it so much perpendicularly. It doesn't, lock, like you can see, it doesn't lock in like this. It comes out like this. And so does my index finger. It doesn't go like this. It starts to split out and it's more parallel rather than it's perpendicular. So this enables me to give a rotation in this fashion. The seam goes down like this. And uh, the other ball that I bowl really well is the undercutter. And it's, it's sort of quite natural to me because of my supple wrist motion towards this side. Because of constant wrist motion this side, the other motion is locked for me. But uh, when, I, when I go, when I hold it really deep, I need to hold it really deep. Because I need to push it like a real, you know, what is this, uh, they, what, is, what is it called? Uh, the spinning wheel. Yeah. So it starts, I need to come under the ball and start spinning it like this. And the ball goes flat on like this. Sometimes when this goes, there is a chance that it might hit the latest part of the seam and it spins square. Or if it just lands on the leather, it just starts skidding or, or go out a little bit for the right hander. And uh, the other one is the seam up arm ball that I bowl. I How hold many it. do you have? Yeah. How these are these are these are just the off spin uh, ones. Wow, so, man! And, and so the carom ball also is. The so the carom ball is something I'm using very sparsely these days. I was about uh, to say that. So yeah, uh, I think uh, I've, I've made, always maintained that there's no change in the change in my stance as far as carom ball goes. It's quite a defensive option as far as I'm concerned. It's not a very attacking option. I've used it more at the tail enders, more when I think the batsman is anticipating it not to come these days. Uh, I use it a lot more in the limited overs format. But uh, these are these are basically the balls that I've been using really effectively uh, over the last but couple of years. But if Shane won't bowl that ball of the century to my getting, you did one to Kane Williamson. Yeah, maybe not quite. I would probably put it on par with Hashim Amla in the T20 World Cup in 2014. So, uh, I mean, uh, Kane Williamson is a, such a big scalp, and uh, he's always he's always been a four times out of four. Yeah, four out of four. It, I mean, it didn't. It is not like a planned four out of four, but it just happened. Uh, although I had my, the, like I, I like to take pride in my uh, planning for a particular series. Kane Williamson generally lunges out towards off stump. There was a big play in that for Anil Kumble as well. He told me how going wider outside off stump for Kane could be a good option. This combination, Virat and Anil, I mean, just talk to me about Virat as a captain because you've, you know, now 2015 onwards, it's been a while that he's captaining in Test cricket. Yeah. Mahi and Virat as captains, can you just tell me a little bit more, having played with both? See, I think uh, both of them have different teams for starters and uh, the, the team that Mahi was handling was a team made of, full of seniors. People knew what they had to do. They just turned up in a game and they knew what they had to do. So there wasn't a lot of driving that was needed and Mahi's style was very different to that of Virat's. Whereas Virat was someone who, he always wants to do it. You know, if you, if you tell him, uh, this is going to be impossible, this is not possible, that's, that's like proper fodder for him to say, Chalo, okay, let me show you how it needs to be done. So you don't want to challenge him. If, if you need to defeat Virat, you need to go with him. So that's, that's, that's how it is because he loves any kind of challenge. And uh, the moment Virat took over, anybody who took over in the middle of the Australian tour would be thinking about how they could settle into the job. His first thing was, let's play five bowlers, let's win tournaments, let's win this test. So, you know, from the moment he took, took over, irrespective of the abilities or irrespective of the immaturity that the team had, he was going for it. And that, that's what you saw in Adelaide. That was one of the finest test matches I've been a part of. I, I feel a little sad that I was not playing that game. But my God, what a game that was to watch. And they, we when went we after, see Nathan Lyon picking so many. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's besides the point. What I'm saying is an Indian team ever since I came Obviously. in. Obviously. Ever since I came into the team, to chase down a score like that on the final day in Adelaide was nothing but attitude. Nothing but telling yourself and telling the team, boss, listen, we are going for this. Not very often do you get a chance in Australia to go after score like that and win on a final day with all potholes outside Austin for an off spinner. We almost did it. I was, I was just, we were just talking about it in Kanpur, me and Virat, about how dearly we could have won that test match. Yeah, and, and, and that's what I meant. I mean, Anil, Virat, you, for me, three of the most intense and three of the most desperate people <laughs> wanting to win test matches, right? Yeah, you're right. I think, I, I don't think you want to, you want to bring the whole, whole team near the discussions that we have. And uh, around around the team dinners and parties, we are talking about cricket, and it, it's never been a culture. I mean, I, I love dissecting and talking cricket all the time. And 
I, I, I think I found allies in, allies in both of them to keep talking cricket 24-7. And sometimes, sometimes I know I can be annoying and to an extent my wife has started understanding test cricket better now. Wow. And we will come to that. We will come to that because this man has just come back from a rare, very rare family three day or whatever holiday uh, from. I will not say where because the next time he'll be hounded. But we will, we will ask him what did he eat in that holiday also. <laughs> but coming to the last part of this interview, the one team that might have scarred us. Very rarely do we lose a home series in England. They're coming back. Any special plans? Any scarring? See, I mean, uh, I, I've maintained, and this is not something. Uh, I'm, I'm, I feel very bad for giving this answer to you, but uh, I don't find myself in that zone or in that space where I'm actually enjoying my bowling. In the sense, Great. every every spell of my bowling is actually trying to get a batsman out or trying to change. It is not like I want to win the game. You know, I'm not looking to win the Test match directly, which has happened in the past go into a test match, look to defeat them, which is also a part of the learning learning uh, curve as well. So it's about trying and building into a spell, getting that one wicket, or trying and plotting and cutting batsmen's run scoring options, getting their wickets. It's been an absolute delight and I'm actually enjoying the process and I've all along heard legends talk about how the process is important, not so much the result, but that's that's a different bygone purpose. But for me, I'm enjoying the process, which in itself is telling me that I'm doing something right. And as far as the team that's coming in, uh, it's going to be a great series. We, we played on a wicket that we played on very, very good wickets against New Zealand. It's going to be very, very important how well we're able to match them spade to spade, dice to dice, all through this five test series because they are a good team. Like what we saw in Bangladesh, they, they were they were faced up against it, but they managed to play and control the ebbs and flows of test cricket. So it's going to be a very, very good series. And Alistair is, is is a very good player himself. If you look back to that 2012 series. He and Kevin Peterson's 186 turned it around for them. He's a good player of spin. In so Bombay, yeah. Contest. In Bombay, yeah. It was a, it was it was a it was a great Test match. They played they played a couple, couple of finest innings I've seen in Test cricket uh, in Mumbai. And uh, make no mistake, Alistair has been around for a long time, and he knows exactly how Test cricket flows are and how to bat, and he can bat long periods of time. But it will be Ravi Ashwin versus Alistair. Many <laughs> will build it up like that. I mean, of course, you you need people to follow the game, so you need build ups like that. I'm going to look forward to this contest between uh, me and Alistair or the entire English team. It's going to be it's going to be great. As I told you, it's 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 about trying and seeing what plans they bring to the table more than me planning the, for them any planning anything for them because it's it, they're going to come in with a purpose. They're going to come in with a plan to try and dissect how we play cricket in the subcontinent, and it's all about waiting to see what they throw at us and try and deflect their plans. That's how it's going to go. One more question before I come to our Diwali celebration. Uh, do you set goals? 39 tests, 220 wickets. If I tweeted uh, some day back that, you know, the England and the Australia series, you'll be close to 300. <laughs> maybe, Actually, maybe, maybe, maybe not. But I mean, let's keep the fingers crossed and uh, good things will happen. But uh, I don't set goals, to be very honest with you. And like I said, I'm enjoying the process. A person who's enjoying the way he's bowling is not looking at numbers so much. But as I told you, it's, bit of, it's a bit of an addiction. Like how Virat wants to get hundreds, I want to get five wicket hauls, be amongst the action, win games for the team. That is an addiction, but uh, these are byproducts, how the wickets come, what achievements I do. Of course, yes, I have, I am really proud of whatever achievements I've done, but it's just a byproduct of how much I'm enjoying the game. Okay. Since the birth of his daughter, he's averaged, what, 14? <laughs> and 14 per wicket or 15 per wicket. So, and, and, and we keep discussing this because we both change diapers at night. So <laughs> that's another commonality that the two of us have. Does Virat know that you, by the way, did you indulge yourself in, in that holiday? Uh, no, not really. Uh, uh, ah, my, yeah. my, my, fam my family is like really pissed off with me because of the way I eat. Uh, so what do you eat? Nothing. I mean, there's a lot of protein, protein intake that's gone into my, uh, gone into my system. Uh, and uh, we've got a very, very good trainer in the team. And so much so that if you see Virat eating, you feel really guilty. Because, you know, it, many people talk about how well he performs, but how, how well or how poorly he eats. Like he, it's, it's like he eats, but he always chooses the healthy option. Yeah, he told me in that so, interview with me, he, does, he doesn't, yeah, I mean. So when you, when you see him eat and you think, God, I want to be like him or perform like him, and you end up seeing what you eat and what he eats, you know why, where the difference he, comes from. He, he's so. now making me feel guilty for <laughs> even offering this. No, I, do. A true see, I, I, I have a sweet tooth. I'm, I'm not denying that, but I would much rather have one cheat day where I can have a few sweets, then actually cheat over a period of time and have, have poor So food. let's have a cheat day. Come on, let's have a cheat day. This is our Diwali hopefully, celebration. Hopefully Virat doesn't have any time to see this. Virat, please. Or I will tweet and send let's you Let's have half video. and half of this. Okay, half and half, says Ashwin. 
and this whole box, by the way, we will give it to him for his family to take. And, and, and that will not be in camera, so Virat <laughs> can't see that. But it's Diwali. All the very best to you for Thank Diwali. You so and will you sort of, you know, send a wish to your fans and my viewers for Diwali as we have this Mishti? See, there's, uh, there's one thing I, I, that I take resolution for every Diwali. I, I, want to, I want to see a place where it is, it is like really clean and India is distraught of pollution and all that. And I'm a big, big lover of dogs. So crackers, when they, when they actually cause harm to the dogs. Dogs, you also have dogs. Yeah, so I know for that love product. dogs, yeah. So they start running in. So I'm, I'm, I'm one of those. started advertising where we have a sound-free Diwali. At least if you like to have, you can, you can probably do your rockets or something like that. And have a colorful Diwali. Try and make sure the noise pollution is far lesser. And hopefully... And have their mishti. And ho you can have how much of a sweets you want. It is a time. I will also uh, relinquish my diet and go on have some uh, sweets. Uh, let's, all, let's all focus towards a wonderful uh, India 2020 and uh, make sure that uh, we, we drive this nation forward in a fashion where uh, we are uh, guilt free. We always uh, look forward to the society, look forward to the people next door and uh, make sure India really prospers by 2020. Okay, let me close this by saying he said five wicket halls is something that he's desperate for. Virat covets hundreds. So why not we do this? Under Mahi, let's win another Champions Trophy and another T20. And with Virat, let these guys be the number one test team in the world. We can't short for less. With, with such champions, with such performers, why not? Let India be the number one team in every format in the world. And let us keep having our Mishti and celebrating Diwali. Thank, Thank you so, you so much, much for talking to me. Talking. It was wonderful talking to you.